So that's Jerry Owens. And he'll be doing the, uh, well, we'll be doing the starting lineups. A 6'3 sophomore, number one, Gary Jacobs. So Gary Jacobs. sophomore, number two, Devin Matthews. Devin Mackey. 6'5 sophomore, number four, Isaac Marsh. Isaac Marsh. Isaac Marsh. Marsh, is that what he said? Parker. Chris Parker. Six ten. Paul Loringer. All right. Of course, we got to fill the holes of the Wagoneer brothers and uh, Van Lockett for the Centralia Blazers. Get those starting lineups here in a minute for you. We have a six ten player on Pierce. We have a. Uh, 6'7", Broussard coming back. Yeah, 6'10", I think they're giving him a few pressure. inches. Number zero, Marcy Rogers. So Rogers is uh, Marcy out of Ontario, California. California, yeah. And Colin Malone out of Lindbergh. Colin Malone. Patrick Broussard out of Let's see, I'm out Oklahoma. Went to Foss for a year or two. Mary Farley. Marced Farley and John Dumitz. So Dumitz also six foot seven. So we have a couple, a couple six foot seven players in there. Give us a little bit of height this year. So we're just about ready to get underway. It should be a fun game tonight. So we're early into league play. Yeah, earlier you asked me uh, what I look to see at uh, Centralia this season. It's uh, to see if they can overcome, you know, the what they lost last year. And also, Zach Karras was, he's one of the returning players who was looking to be one of the leaders this year. And he's out with a hamstring injury. And he's not sure when he's going to return. So. That's a big obstacle for them to overcome. The one guy that they're going to look to lean on is out. Yeah. Makes it tough because you, you really want those veterans on your team. So Pierce gets the ball early, tries a lob in, but that's going to be uh, batted away, but rebounded by a Pierce player. There's their tall player there. That's six foot ten, Paul Loranger out of uh, Maple Valley who gets that put back in and he's also uh, fouled. So what are they saying here? They're gonna, he, he made the shot and they're gonna well, they're, shoot a free throw. Actually they didn't put that on the scoreboard yet so they're gonna give him two shots it looks like. I guess so, they're gonna call it before the shot which is it's not when they blew the whistle but yeah, it's, it's okay. Kind of an interesting call there. <laughs> Looked like it could have been a follow through there. So he makes that first one. So. And here comes that second shot. That's up and good. So Pierce with a quick two points there. Game just underway. Pierce College full court pressure there as the women's team did that too earlier if you watched their game. So Coach Moore want them to attack the basket there out to do mitts. Got their players moving quite a bit. Ball stolen by Pierce. And uh, it's going to be a foul on do mitts. And also a basket on that one, too. So that was Devin Matthews who got the steal and uh, also got fouled on the way up. So four to nothing so far. Really early in this game, Pierce ahead. You don't want Dumitz to get to too many fouls here early. They really need him. This is that free throw, yeah, rebounded. Very short bench for the Trailblazers. Oh. Pierce is out to a hot start here. 7 nothing lead. So Chris Park with that three-point shot there. That's good. So Pierce a very active team, very athletic too. Ball to the outside. Dumitz with a three-point shot. That's in and out. Rebounded by Centralia. Rebound by Marcy down there. Yeah. Rogers. Pierce with a quick shot. Rebounded. And uh, Moore wants a timeout right away. So Coach Moore calling timeout for Centralia. Pierce up 7-2 to two really early, just a minute into this first half, 19 uh, 
0-1 left, in fact, in the first half with Pierce up 7-2. And again, Pierce always really a tough team to play. They're always very athletic, and uh, they uh, traditionally they have been for a long time. Yeah, definitely. They had a guy that came in here last year and just put on a show for us. Dunk after dunk, alley oop dunks, yeah, regular that dunks. <laughs> Man, he is something else. I wonder where he uh, is this year. And so he might be out there <laughs> playing for a uh, a big college someplace. Oh yeah, definitely. So Pierce doing that full court pressure. But I, I, do, I recognize a few of these players from Pierce as they do have lots of sophomore players yeah. on their lineup. Good veteran team out there. Understands the coach's philosophy. So Centrea bringing it up. That's Malone. Barsh. Is it is it Malone or Barsh? Is it Malone? I can't. Oh, Number Long, four. I think. Oh yeah, you're right. Malone. And that is Rogers with the rebound, but they're saying the ball's going over to Pierce. Uh, he might have stepped out of bounds. I don't see a foul up there. Huh? So a little confusing there on that call, but I think he went out of bounds. Yeah, a little bit quicker action here in the men's game than we've seen in the women's game here prior. So Pierce keeping it on the outside, looking for something inside, but just playing around. Tries to go in, the ball's batted away, and looks like it's going to go out on Centralia, so it'll be Pierce's ball. Kind of bounced off a Centralia player. It was number 23 who uh, it bounced off of. So Pierce getting the ball in. Drive into the lane, but it's going to be stolen. Two on one there. And a, kind of an awkward two on one break there, but the end result is good yeah. with uh, Chris, Chris, Colin Malone making that basket. So 4 7, Pierce still on top. They're, they have the ball right now. It's kind of going around the perimeter, trying to find somebody inside. They got that 6 foot 10 person. Yeah, look for that guy down low. Kind of a quick inside pass, but uh, well defended by Centralia. 13 on the shot clock. Back outside. Shot. It's like a three point shot. It's good. So 10 to 4. Pierce with that lead. And Malone brings it up. Looking for someone on the outside. There's Broussard. Giving it out to Rogers. Rogers moving in, taking a shot as he falls down. And it goes in and out. It's kind of an unlucky bounce for him. So Pierce bringing it up really quickly. Going to throw it back outside. Another three point shot by a Pierce player goes up and over the uh, backstop, so it'll be out of bounds. That's Gary Jacobs out of Las Vegas, Nevada, who took that shot. Six foot three. Yeah, quite a few players out of Las Vegas on the Pierce roster. Because they're money players. <laughs> I guess you could say that. Wow, okay, so uh, rebound and that goes out of bounds. Farley had that rebound, but he uh, stepped out of bounds there. So Pierce will bring it up, leading 10 to 4. 16.58 left in this game, at least the first half of this game. Back out on top for Pierce. Setting up a play right now. Yeah, taking, their, for taking their time on, their off, on the half court offense. Definitely taking their time. Going inside to their big man, back outside. Back Ten inside, seconds. he turns around and uh, didn't really need to force that shot, but he turned around, took the shot, and missed that one. Rebound by Rogers. He's going to bring it all the way up, stop, take a stutter step, shoot and miss. Gets his own rebound, though. That's nice. Able to put that back up. 10-6 to six now. So nice little uh, follow-through by him. Not giving up on the ball. So Pierce bringing it down. Matthews with the ball. Back out to Matthews. Fakes a three-point, steps in. Oh, had a player inside. It was a nice little play. Uh, that was, what, Barsh, who cut across the middle and was open, but just missed that pass. Yeah, perfect pass there by number two, Devin Matthews. Yeah, so I think uh, Citra's going to have to watch that backdoor play there because uh, he was wide open. Mm -hmm. Looks like Coach is calling Marcy's name, definitely looking to play through Rogers. Marcy's name's Marciano on here, but he goes by Marcy from Marcy Rogers. So Broussard with the ball at the top of the key over to Malone. And gives it to Broussard. Broussard with kind of a hook shot that was contested. Looks like the defensive player might have got his hand on it, but it still goes in. So 10 to 8, Centrea down by two now. About 15, 37 left in the game. 
Pierce with the ball, keeping it on the perimeter, waiting for something to happen maybe on the inside. There's a quick cut to the basket over to the uh, big six foot ten player. Broussard blocked it. Yeah. Nice block by him. Their uh, their center, who is six foot ten, uh, really didn't get up very high. He didn't didn't elevate himself. Did you notice that? Yeah. And then so. he looks like he compounds it down here with another mistake, making a foul. Are they going to call it on Gary Jacobs? Was it Gary Jacobs? Yeah, out of Pierce, okay. the six-three guard. And yeah, this is Farley at the line, out of California. This is that first one. He's what six foot three, plays kind of a guard forward, the hybrid position. So ten to ten to eight still early in this game. Nice yeah. little crowd out here. Centralia really with only two two big men, Dumetz and Broussard. So yeah, a couple of their other 6-3 players are going to have to step up and play that role down low and fight for some boards down there. Or maybe even when Broussard or Dumetz takes a break, they have to step up and play the big man position. Yeah, they're going to have to be careful they don't foul out too. Stolen by Malone. Malone brings it in, tries to feed it inside, but can't do that. It's taken away by, by Pierce. Pierce quickly brings it in. Nice little uh, athletic play by a Pierce player, but he misses that. Barish who tries to get it up over his head, but it uh, doesn't go in, and Centralia gets a rebound. So 10 to nine is the score. Almost 15 minutes left in this first half. Malone dribbling the ball, attacking. Dumitz gets the, uh, the ball that kind of got away from Malone, or Rogers. Shoots, misses, and Pierce brings it down right away. Gets it out to number 15 for a three-point shot, and that is good. So that is Alex Johnson, six foot five, out of Olympia. 13 to nine now is the score. And no one picked up Johnson on that. <laughs> that one just missed assignment. He was wide open there, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. So Rogers with the ball over to Malone. He throws it, but he stepped on the court, and so over and back on Centralia. Another turnover by Centralia. They want to watch those turnovers tonight. Yeah, at first they seem to be handling defensive pressure pretty well, but these last two possessions, it's been a struggle for the Trailblazers. So Matthews with the ball, gives it inside. Looks like number four has a fairly clear path to the basket, but he misses that. That was Barsh, Isaac Barsh. Pierce with the rebound, though. Gets a new clock, Barsh again. Nice little feed. Oh, boy. And that looks like Dumitz gets his second one, right? If that's who they're going to call it on there. Yep, John Dumitz picks up second foul. So we need to be careful on that. He wants to be really careful. Isaac Barsh to the line. 15-9 is the score right now. You hear the crowd out there. Encouraging both teams. So he makes that one. 16-9 is the score with Pierce. We have a substitution here for Centralia in a minute. So Rogers bringing it up. Gives it over to Malone. Malone over to Bruce. Whoops. It's going to be a foul call there as Farley is driving through the lane. Yeah. Who'd they call that on? 32. 15. Yeah, Alex Johnson. Alex Johnson. Relatively quiet crowd now. <laughs> yes. They were a little more active uh, a few minutes ago. So that first one is up and good. 16 to 10. And we have uh, Condell Scott coming in. He played last year, too, for Dumitz. So losing some height there as Dumitz comes in. Uh, goes to the sideline. And Mondell. Yeah. Coach is saying, saying that Marcy's going to go inside on the offensive play and probably even defense, too. So Pierce bringing it up. Dumitz with his second foul had to bring him out pretty early. He can't afford to lose him. And they have their tall guy out too right now, so why not? Travel. As he carried it all along his back, an awkward play. I've never really seen that before. He's going to put it behind his back and lost it and was <laughs> just walking with it. So actually a good substitution for uh, Centre because they take out, took out their 6'10 player, Pierce did, so. Good time to bring out one of our big guys, give him a rest. Condell with the pass. 
Over to Rogers. Rogers over to Condell Scott. And he hits that one. Good shot so by Condell. It was off balance. 16 to 14. So it's an offense stolen. And uh, nice little uh, reverse layup there from Marcy Farley. We'll make that, and Centuria ties up the score just like that. So 16, 16, 12, 46 left. Timeout by Pierce College. What are you seeing so far? I seen Condell come in and put a spark on for the Centuria Trailblazers and brought them right back in this ball game. Yeah, sometimes you need that. Sometimes you know, as a player, you're sitting on the bench and you're you're watching the flow of the game and you're kind of, you know, picking out spots that you think you can get in there and do certain things. And I think that's what Condell Scott did, but they probably asked him for that uh, instant offense there. He uh, played on the team last year, was a backup to Lockett, mm -hmm. and so he's got some veteran experience there. One of the, uh, the key players to help the other players understand the offense. Oh, yeah, definitely so, some valuable learning time playing under Lockett. And oh, yeah, scrimmaging definitely. Scrimmaging against him. So Pierce will get the ball. 12.45 left of this first half of our doubleheader tonight. 21, Jeffries with the ball, he gets it back. Over to Matthews. Matthews looking for something inside, can't find it now. It does go inside to, to Barsh. Barsh is a super athlete out here. I'm surprised he didn't jam that one. Seen him with some nice layup moves even though he's unable to finish, showing his athleticism. Almost thrown away by Centralia. So that's Rogers with the ball. He's going to drive in. He gets blocked, and it's going to, they're going to call it out on Pierce. So Centre will get that ball back. 18 to 16. Pierce in the lead right now. 12 minutes left. And what are they saying? Oh, they're saying that Pierce player knocked it out. That's what it appeared to happen. And Great so defense will get it. by Pierce to anticipate that pass and knock it away. Yeah, 20 seconds left in that on the shot clock. Might, might be getting away with so the carry here. Farley there. Driving in. Set. Set that's going to be a foul on Borish. It's just 13 foul on Pierce. Three on to try it too. So going to get into Broussard. Touched by Pierce. That was Borish. They put 34 on the shot clock. So it's Barsh knocked that out. So Trey trying to get it inbound, having a little bit of trouble. It's stolen, Condell Scott. And he's on the defensive end, but he had a two-on-one break there. So Pierce up 20 to 16 now. Good fast break by Pierce. And Barsh misses that three-pointer, Broussard with it. Looking for somebody to come and take the ball. Farley now with the ball, throws it inside to Broussard, turn around, jump shot, and he hits that. So 20 to 18. Broussard uh, playing at Mount Dahoma his high school years and actually a returning player. Backed up the um, Wagners last year. Got some good playing time though. So Pierce getting the ball around, trying to find something inside. And that is uh, Jeffries, David Jeffries out of Las Vegas, Nevada. He travels with the ball. It'll be another turnover. 20 to 18, still the score. 11, 19 left in the first half with Pierce in the lead by two. So Centre doing a really good job keeping up with Pierce here. It's Farley losing the ball. Jeffries steals it, but it's stolen back. Scott with the ball. Gives it to Farley. He drives in, tries to, tries to get something going there. It's blocked. And it goes out of bounds. It'll be Centre's ball. That is uh, Paul Loringer, who's that six foot ten person out of Maple Valley. So was there a foul called on somebody on that one? No, just out of bounds. Just out of bounds. Okay. Should have been a foul. There's lots of contact, but they're letting him play. Gonna get that ball out there. Scott with the ball. Kind of a dangerous pass there. But Scott looking for somebody. Gives it to Farley. Farley takes the move. Kind of hop, skip, and jump. And gets it out to. Marcy. To Marcy. Marcy Rogers. Rogers, yeah, nice little layup there for him. 20-20 now. So Pierce will be making a substitution. So Pierce kind of, I'm surprised Pierce isn't moving the ball a lot more. And uh, they're a pretty athletic team. Now they're starting to get those passes off. Three-point shot, and that is good. So that is Barsh again. Well, let's make, check that. 
Was that Parker that made that? I think it was Parker. I'd say it was. Or number five, right? Rebound. Yeah, quick it was. break. Parker switches hand. Nice athletic move by him. Gets that layup 25 to 20. Ten minutes left in the first half here. So quick five points there by, uh, by Pierce. Almost stolen. We're going to call that Broussard the last one to touch that. So that ball is going to be turned over to Pierce. So uh, Coach Moore wants a timeout here. Probably a well-advised timeout at this point just to kind of settle his team down. The, the other team has scored a quick five and got the ball back. So you just kind of want to slow them down, get, talk to your players to have them relax and just make sure they're doing their assignments. Yeah, he wants to make sure that this game doesn't just slip away from yeah, him. Yeah, it could very well do that if they don't, they're not careful at this point. So they've been doing a really good job staying with them, but um, you can make a few mistakes here and quick ones. And a uh, team like Pierce that is very athletic, very good uh, ball movement on their part, they can run away with it if you're not careful. Yeah, I think if you're uh, the Trailblazers, you kind of want to just keep it close and wait for the second half and when you can bring your other big guy back in and try and compete and win the ball game. But for right now, just keep it close and don't let him get away from you. Yeah, if you're just tuning in, so Centrea's winning 25, no, they're behind 25-20, and uh, John Dumitz has two fouls, one of the, one of the big players for Centrea, so he, they're arresting him right now. And uh, Pierce taking a little bit of advantage with their big guy. They brought him back in. They have a 6'10 center, uh, Paul Loringer out of Maple Valley. And so they may have a little bit of a height advantage here at this point. But, you know, I think uh, we have uh, Condell Scott, who's a really fast player when you think about that. And he's kind of balancing that out a little bit, trying to create space there for himself, getting some shots off. Yeah. Some instant offense, as you said. So as we come back into play, Pierce will get the ball up by uh, five points. They scored a quick five here, so that's why the timeout happened. Try to hold them to those five points. As we, we mentioned this before, basketball is a game of runs, and uh, Pierce went on a little bit of run. you got to stop that run. So Pierce looking for something inside, outside, another three-point shot. And uh, they're going to make that one. That's uh, Gary Jacobs. Uh, another player out of Las Vegas, Nevada. So now 27-20. Condell Scott with the ball. Gives it out to Barsh. It's stolen away. And uh, probably it's going to be a foul there. So that is Devin Matthews. Nice little layup there. And he is fouled. So 29-20 now with a chance to make it a 10-point differential here. So that kind of a, that foul probably shouldn't ha have happened uh, you know, I mean, it was a legitimate foul, but he probably should have just let him go, let him on, go that on that one, yeah. So Scott will bring the ball down court. Give it over to Rogers. Rogers out to Malone. Malone back to Scott. Malone doesn't really look to score that much. No, so far he doesn't. Mm -mm. Looks like he's looking for somebody inside. 17, 16 on the shot clock. Over to Scott. Scott brings it out. Gives it back to Malone and... Malone tries to get to Farley, and uh, it goes out of bounds. So, Citra, you really got to be careful right here. Yeah, he, Malone needs to see the hoop there, because even his coach was calling for him to take that shot. It's just not even looking at the hoop. So, Pierce with the drive and another foul. It's almost like uh, Pierce is just driving in to try to get the foul at this point. So, you've got to play smart here. That's uh, Matthews who will go to the line for two with a nine-point lead right now. So here comes his first free throw. And that's going to miss. So Moore making a uh, substitute. Coach Moore bring Kyle North in for Malone. Malone and maybe telling North to take those open shots. He yeah. probably, probably wants to talk to, to Malone there. So yeah. second free throw on the way. And that one is good. So 10-point lead now. Pierce is a very solid team, and they're not going to be giving up many open shots. So when you have them, you got to take them. So North with the ball out to Scott. Scott back to North. North looking for Broussard. Broussard on the wing, throws it to a cutting. Rogers who misses it, and Pierce gets the ball again, and that's number three, David Bays out of Las Vegas, Nevada. You guessed it with that shot. So 32. <laughs> 20. Scott with a long three. He makes that. 
So finally they stopped the bleeding there. 32-23, 8 18 left in this first half. And Charlie is in a 2 3 zone. Changed to a 2 3 zone now. Oh, hit the, hit the top of the basket, so it should go to Centrea. That was uh, Devin Matthews with that long three point shot, but it went up at the top of the uh, backboard. That's out of bounds. Centrea will get it. Yeah, 3 2 zone, is it? Yeah, 3 2 zone that Centrea was setting up in. And Rogers with the ball, kind of stuck there. Gives to Broussard. Broussard muscles his way up. Puts up a uh, layup, but misses. A little bit hard on that. Yeah, probably should have dunked it if he could have. <laughs> that, that big and that close to the rim. Nice little play there. So that is uh, Matthews with a nice little put in. It's a nice pass to him, and he just jumped up and put it in. North out to Scott. Scott maybe looking for another three point. North, they need some points here. Patrick, other side, Pat. So 19 on the shot clock. Going back and forth, Broussard takes the bounce. Turns around, shoots, but misses that. So just his touch is just a little bit off. Well, nice little feed there, but missed by Jacobs. They're very good ball movement as far as Pierce goes. Oh yeah. Scott open for a three, but doesn't take it. Hangs on to it, gets it to North. North gets the ball stolen from, trying to get it to Scott. A nice little pull-up shot by Parker. About a 15-footer, makes it 36-23. 6.47 left in the first half, so you gotta be careful they don't run away from him. Ball is stolen again by Pierce. They have to make but smarter passes. Oh, just kind of a... Lack of days go pass there, and it's going to be uh, stolen. And stolen back. Looks like it's going to be a jump ball. Oh, but Pierce called timeout. So a couple players down. Looks like they're all okay. But it'll be a Pierce ball because he called timeout. So 36 23. Yeah, they're on a run. Citroën desperately needs to come down and get a couple points. You don't really want to come down and just take a, shot, a three point shot right away because if you miss it, then um, that causes more problems. So you do want to move the ball around a little bit and try to get a good shot in. Yeah, and they had a couple inside shots there, but they just, uh, the touch was off a little bit. You've probably seen like three possessions in a row where Centralia threw it away up at the top of the key. Couldn't even get it inside and really struggling with the ball pressure. Yeah. And it seems like all these, all the Pierce, can, Pierce players are, are like the same, <laughs> athletic and lengthy, yeah. playing the passing lanes. Well, you know, I think what would break that is if Centralia would pass a little bit more and then hit a three, <laughs> then it would force Pierce not to collapse inside like they've been doing. So Pierce with the ball, 36-23. You got a six foot 10 guy, get it up to number three, who turns around and shoots, but misses their six foot 10 player. Wow, just that height advantage there. So Paul Loringer, just as you saw, he just jumped up over everybody and was able to tip it in. Yep, shot it, got his own rebound. It's hard to beat that height sometimes. <laughs> so Scott out to North. Get it to Marcy! Going to get it to Marcy, he says. So. Yeah. Rogers out to North. North not shooting the ball either. 15 on the shot clock. Uh, Ill-advised pass there. So Rogers, Rogers with the inside pass. It didn't quite make it. And that'll be Rogers with that, with that foul. 16 fouls. You hear the announcer Jerry. Yeah, he's letting, Owen, the, he's letting the refs know because they tried bringing it to one and one, and that's a, that's the seventh foul. Go, Ray. So Pierce getting the ball in the perimeter. Another three point shot there. And that's going to be good. It seems like all their, that's a core at a post falls Idaho, and it seems like all their players are hitting threes. Yeah. So Centre with the ball. Broussard on the outside gives it over to North. North gives it to Scott. Scott takes a step, gives it back to North. North tries to. Get it to Broussard, but gives it back to Scott. And Scott with that three-point shot. So he seems like he's hitting those. Might as well take a couple more. 41-26. <laughs> they need some offense right now. They need to make some defensive stops. So that was good. Farley knocked the ball away. It goes out of bounds. They're going to call it Centralia ball. 
So good, uh, good defensive stop by Centray, although the uh, Pierce player claiming he got hit in the wrist. Yeah, it's been a physical game, and the refs are letting it go on both sides. So yeah. that's just one of those plays that they let go. Just under five minutes left in this first half, Scott. Over to Brooks, back to Brooks. Well, Rogers loses control, taking it away quickly. Almost a travel there. The nice little move. And that is uh, Parker with another two points, 43-26 now. Get it to Marset. Get it to Marset. So they're trying to get to Marset. Farley shoots that one. It's an, about a 15-foot uh, shot there. Marcel Farley, and coming back the other way, Pierce answers that with a quick shot. That's Barr, or Bays, actually. So Farley with the ball, he shoots a three, and he hits that. <laughs> so uh, Jason Moore really wanting uh, Farley to get the ball. Yeah, He's one probably of the got the hot to hand. go through him. Three-point shot there. That is uh, Parker, Chris Parker. Six foot two guard, and he hits that three point, so 48 31. We got Condell Scott bringing the ball up. Marcel Farley out of California. So it's Broussard with the ball. Scott out to Rogers. Rogers tries to go inside, can't, gives it back to Scott. Over to Farley. He shoots that three pointer in and out, no one there to rebound. So they're gonna get back really quick. Pierce brings it up. Pierce seems like every time they come down, they're hitting this shot. So they're gonna get a defensive stop here again. Looks inside, they're very patient here. 21 on the shot clock. Makes it, got a player free, tries a three-point shot, misses it, throws it inside. Scott intercepts it, gives it out to Rogers. It's stolen by, oh, looks like he's gonna step on the line. So that was number five for Pierce. Chris Parker, good idea to try to steal it like that, but he just stepped on the line. So the ball will go back to Centroia. 2.57 left in this first half. And uh, Pierce with a 48-31 lead here. Pretty close in the, the first opening minutes of the game. So I think it was 20-20 at one point. Yeah, it was 20-27 at, I think, the last time out. And it's gone pretty crazy since then yeah. for... Uh, Pierce, they've been hitting all their shots on three-point shots, driving them in, hitting all their lanes. So we got Brooks in there now. And that's Farley with another shot. He misses that. Coach Moore telling his team to get back on defense quick. So Pierce puts it around the perimeter. They're pretty patient with their shot selection. Oh, it's like he tripped a little bit there. Ball's rebounded. And that was Parker with the missed shot. Scott in traffic. Bringing it back outside, looking for something to get to Farley. Farley fakes a pass inside, get out to Scott, back to Farley. I think they really want Farley to shoot quite a lot. Quick pass over to Broussard. He's fouled, gets the ball off, and is fouled, so he'll go to the line. 48-33, right? Chance to make it 34. So they call it on 35. So Loringer, that's their big six foot ten center, so uh, Broussard just kind of powering his way up. Yeah, it seemed like the coach was even upset with that because he had a wide open shot and he didn't take it and then he waited for the defense to come and then he went up when the defense came. So, it's, But it worked out for him. Worked out the best for him. Got a free throw too. <laughs> Made that free throw. Yeah, 48-34, 2-13 left in the first half of this game. Earlier tonight the uh, Centralia women beat the Pierce Lady Blazers 80-68 to and they are 2-0 and on the season. Uh, men lost to Tacoma on Thursday, so they're 0-1. They're nice little acrobatic move by David Jeffries, who scores 50 now to 34, 153 left in the first half. Scott goes to Farley. Farley fakes it inside for the careful three. Gets his blocked, and uh, Broussard ends up with it. Gives it to Brooks, and he's going to call Brooks for traveling, the ref right in front of us. So... Out of Ontario, California, 5'11", Raylan Brooks. So Pierce will get that ball with 139 left, leading 50 to 34. 
Quick inside turnaround shot by number four, who misses it. And it looks like uh, they're going to call it a white ball. I'm not really sure how they decided who had the ball right there. Yeah, I have no idea. There are two players in the air. One, <laughs> one came down, and the other one came over him. And they were uh, one landed <laughs> on the ground before the ball hits the ground. So it was Barsh with that missed shot. Broussard now for Centre with the ball looking inside to get to Farley. He takes one dribble, tries to bring it up, but the ball is knocked away. That's number four. Well, wow, pretty athletic guy there, yeah, Barsh. Nice finger roll there. He'd probably get up and dunk that ball pretty easily, oh, I yeah. would think. <laughs> Out of Tacoma. So Brooks into Farley. Farley over to Brooks. Brooks with a three-point shot in and out. And that is Loringer with the rebound. Pierce will bring it up quickly. Nice little athletic move there again, but it's missed. And Loringer just standing there. The ball comes right to him and just turns around, puts it up there. 54-34 now. So 20-point deficit. Brooks inside to Farley. Farley being surrounded. Pierce really claps on him pretty quick. North trying to get into Farley. Farley not able to get a shot off out to Brooks. Brooks gives it to Broussard. Is that Broussard on that side? That was Farley who had the ball. Shot missed. A six foot 10 height really gives him an advantage for Pierce there. They get the rebound, they'll bring it up. Seven, six, five, four, three. They gotta just shoot, then drive in and try to shoot. And right at the buzzer, well, right before the buzzer, We'll give it to him, that's number four. Isaac Barsh with that layup. So no foul on that. 54, 56, let's make it 34. So a lot of adjustments need to be made during halftime here. We'll wait for those stats to come out. What do you think of that first half there? Pierce has some athletes on their team. They're running, running and gunning, getting up and down and really hitting their three-point shots. Everything's falling for Pierce right now. Well, you know, at the beginning of the, uh, that first half, though, they were, uh, Centre was doing a good job keeping up. But what do you think the difference was? Better ball movement a little bit and uh, be patient with her shots. They tried to force it, I think, maybe uh, too many times, at least Centre did. Yep, Smart, so. smarter passes, smarter shots, and get back on defense because they're definitely running right after they get the rebound and they're beating Centralia. Yeah, really good court. on that fast break, aren't they? they? They just know where to get the ball. I've only, I saw maybe one time they were a little confused, uh, Pierce College, on that fast break. So 56-34. Uh, first game tonight, though, if you weren't here, the Lady Blazers beat the Lady Raiders 80-68. to And the Lady Raiders for league are 2-0. and So just talking to Coach Schutz a minute ago, he was pretty happy with the performance. Leading scorer for Pierce in the first half was Chris Parker with 15 points. Leading P scorer for Centralia was Farley, Marced Farley, and he had 10 points. Starting out the game is Malone, number four for uh, Centralia. He passes it inside to Marcy. Marcy looks for the opposite post, Broussard. Broussard's unable to handle as it's knocked away by a Pierce defender. Possession will stay with Centralia as they take it out underneath their own basket. Number 23, Farley inbounds it. Malone with the basketball now at the top of the key, being guarded tightly by Edwards. Passes it to Marcy. Marcy back to Malone. And then Marcy back up top of the top of the key. Kicks it to Farley on the left wing. Farley swing passes it over to Malone. Malone dribbles along the right side of the baseline. Side clock. And violation uh, here. So they're making just, some good passes. Just, yeah, just like I got caught up in the offense. I'm sure they got <laughs> caught up. But there's yeah. no excuses when you're out there on the court playing. And it's 56-34 as Pierce with the lead. And... Number two, Matt Edwards actually up top. Looks like Dumitz may have picked up his third foul there. Or are they going to call it on 35? Uh, yeah, it's going to be called on John Dumitz. That's his third. Too early in the second half for that to happen. First free throw is good by number four, Isaac Barsh. Isaac Barsh, sophomore out of Tacoma. 
second free throw is up and good. So now Pierce with the 58-34 lead, 19 minutes left to go here in the ball game. Marcy running the point for Centralia, kicks it over to Malone. Malone back to Marcy. Marcy over to the Farley in the corner. Farley to John DeMitch. John DeMitch finds himself in a little bit of trouble, but gets a shot off in the, from the left corner over there, and it's up and in. Good job by John DeMitch. Bringing the score a little bit closer as it's 58 to 36. Malone picks up the loose ball, having a hard time handling it, and he's fouled by number five, Chris Parker. Chris Parker, far from home, from Suff Suffolk, Virginia. Farley will inbound it, and Malone will set up the offense for the Trailblazers. Malone kicks it to the right side of the court, and then swings it back over to the left side of the court. And just multiple swing passes by Centralia, which is one thing that you pointed on, just mm -hmm. work on their ball movement, and it's what they're doing the just first couple of possessions. They make sure they keep their eye on that shot clock, though. So 18 minutes, 18 seconds left to go here in the ball game, and inbounded to Marcy up top as he sets up the offense. Passes it to Malone along the right side, then Broussard in the right corner. And as Broussard has the ball over his, holding it over his head, he gets it knocked out. Knocked out of his hands, possession will stay with Centralia. Seven seconds on that shot clock. So seven seconds for Centralia to shoot after they get it inbounded here and they go for the far pass as it's to um, uh, Marcy. It goes over the half court line, but no call. And shot clock is gonna, the horns are gonna be buzzed and Turnover Centralia. It's just weird because you know the the ball was already shot and then, and then it went Pierce, off. Pierce gets the uh, rebound. They should just let play go. Yeah, I think that's one of the rules that like the NBA players they they hate it. They can't stand that that call. Yeah. Because it ruins the fast break for the yeah, team. You bet. But. Pierce now with the basketball down at the other end, holding on to a 22-point lead, 58-36. And shots up by Pierce off the front of the rim, no good. Barsh in there for the rebound, though. And they're battling with the big guys. And there's gonna be a foul called. and White number zero, Marcy Rogers. Rogers. Uh, that's two fouls on Rogers, and Pierce will inbound it underneath their own hoop and quick foul, or quick inbound to Barsh. Barsh drives and fouled by Patrick Broussard. So Barsh will be at the line shooting two. 17 minutes and 30 seconds left to go here in the ball game as Pierce leads 58 to 36. See the their six foot ten player, Loringer standing there. He look he's as big. Mm -hmm. I mean, width wise too. You know. Yeah, both <laughs> both three both free throws are good by uh, Pierce player. Centralia continuing to work on their offense, work on the ball movement. As it's Malone then. Marcia back to over to Farley. Farley puts up the three and it's up and in. So assist goes to Marcy there on the three point shot by Farley. Scores now 60 to 39. Pierce with the lead. Pierce player cuts through the defense, lays it up, rolls off the rim. Another Pierce player is there for the board and the putback, but that's no good. Marcy comes out with the ball out of the scramble. Looks for Patrick Broussard underneath the hoop. Patrick Broussard has a hard time handling it, but saves it and then kicks it out to Farley, who drives hard in the lane and gets up to try and finish over the defender and draws the foul. So Farley will be at the line shooting two free throws. Good aggressive play by Farley. Looked like he was trying to dunk it, but he's really, far away. yeah, really attacking the basket. You really want to see that. Mm -hmm. He could have stopped and taken a three point shot, but elected to go in. Farley now shooting two free throws. 
That's good. First one's up and in. Got the coach standing right in front of you there. Hard to, to see what's <laughs> happening out on the court. Yeah. And now Condell Scott will check in for Patrick Broussard. Give Patrick Broussard a little bit of a break here. As the score is 60 to 40 after the first free throws made by Farley, second free throws made. So he makes both of them and brings them a little bit closer as it's a 19 point game, 60 to 41. 16 minutes and 30 seconds left to go here in the ball game. Number two with the ball up top, Matthews kicks it over to Jacobs. Jacobs back to Matthews. Matthews with the shot, contested shot, and it's in and out. Good, well contested by Condell Scott. Condell Scott dribbles to the lane. Nobody picks him up, and he passes it to Malone. Malone puts up a shot, no good. Marsh is there for the putback and up and in. So four straight points here by Centralia. Nice little run. They're going to call a foul on Farley as he's Foul number three underneath the hoop there. Number three, David Bays is going to go to the line for two free throws. I'm not sure if Farley was uh, upset because he didn't touch him or it was his third foul. It's like it's actually his second only, right? Yeah, his second foul. I think he's probably upset just because he's been fouled like that when they didn't call it. And yeah. He comes down here and then they call it, so... All you can ask is for them to be consistent. That's yeah. what you really want. Yeah, that's probably what he's upset about because he knows he fouled him. Condell with the ball running the point for the Trail Blazers. Pass it over to Demetz in the left corner. Demetz back to Condell. Condell will set up his offense. Look over to Malone. Malone still not looking to score. Passes it to Marcy in the corner. Marcy Rogers passes it uh, to Condell. Condell is wide open, got away with the travel there. And gives it to Marcy. Marcy skip pass over to Malone, and then they got to watch the shot clock here as it gets, gets down to five seconds. And Farley throws one up, five seconds left on the shot clock, and gets lucky as it hits the backboard and in. Scores now 62 to 46, 16 point game. Centralia on this run here could be pulling a could be coming up with something. And now loose ball and there's is on the floor and looked like it's a kick ball. We'll that see looks what like the call it, is. I think it was. Oh, they're no. gonna call foul, red 21. 21 grabbing, I think. So foul's gonna be called on David Jeffries, sophomore out of Las Vegas. Farley was really upset because he had a fast break going there. <laughs> Marcy inbounds it to Condale. Over to Malone, Malone pass fakes over to Demetz in the right corner, shots up, no good. Rebound by Matthews, Matthews looks up to number 21, David Jeffries, Jeffries dribbles to the lane, puts it up and it's no good. Now fight for the ball, Jacobs comes up with it, passes it in the corner to Johnson. Alex Johnson hits the three and gives, his, gives some high fives to the bench along his way back. 65-46 now, 14-42 left in this game. Condell with the ball, passes it to Marcy. Marcy being guarded tightly, passes it into this high post. Farley, Farley puts it up and no good. Farley, lots of contact, but no call. And scores 65-46, 14 minutes and 20 seconds left to go. Pierce on the offensive end here on the, and puts up a three point shot from the left hand corner. It's no good. Number two, Matthew sets up the offense for his team. Jacobs passes it over to number three, Bays. Bays dribbles through the lane, puts it up, and no good. Condell Scott now on the fast break. He's going to have to slow this one down and wait for his teammates as he didn't have numbers. Condell passes it to number 23, Farley. Farley dribbles through the lane and gets drawn. He draws a foul, actually, by uh, one of the Pierce defenders. There are three of them there in the area surrounding him. I think uh, Coach Moore just said, Farley, just get the ball and go for it. It mm -hmm. seems like, you know, he might need a little breather here pretty soon. Confusion on the inbound play, but they get it in. <laughs> Down to Farley, wide open underneath the hoop. Wasn't expecting it, but he was wide open anyways, and yeah. he puts it up and in. Backhanded shot there, yeah. too. Makes it and rolls on the ground and gets back up. Really a great move by Farley. Just 
Yeah, really uh, unusual turnover. Rare and unusual by Pierce, just throwing the ball with nobody there. I think he was expecting someone to cut. <laughs> cut across that key and uh, nobody there. So 13.36 left. Full timeout for Pierce. 65.48. So full Crowd. time out and pretty quiet here. I can almost hear his whisper. <laughs> 17 point game. It seems like Centrelli is able to come down with a couple of baskets and make a little run, but then it's just answered right away by Pierce. And it's just Centrelli is not able to cut it down significantly. Yeah. I think the Pierce coach is probably just telling his, his players to just calm down a little bit, slow down, calm down, because they've Lost, turned over the ball a couple times there, and that last play there was a, uh, just a bad pass. So they're actually doing they do a pretty good job when they just play their game, and I think they're just playing a little rushed right now. So uh, let's see. The, I'm trying to think the next home game. I think we have that scheduled some here, don't we? Someplace here. Should be on the back. Yeah, Grace Harbor uh, on the 8th. That'd be, that'll be Wednesday night. Those uh, women will start at 6 and the men should be, what, 8 o'clock? They have it listed as 7, but it, the men should be 8. Yeah, it should be 8. So come on out to that game or tune in. Pondell running the point for Centralia Trailblazers. On the floor is for Centralia is Condell Scott, Marcy, for, and then there's... Farley, Malone, and Dumetz. John Dumetz receives the ball at the left wing, back to Marcy, and then tries to look for Dumetz, but the pass is off and out of bounds. With 13 minutes and 11 seconds left to go, scores 68, or 65, 48. Pierce leads over the Centralia Trailblazers. Centralia can't tr afford to turn the ball over too many more times like that. Hmm. Centralia comes, comes up with the steal as Malone dribbles the ball, being guarded tightly by the Pierce defender. Condell with the basketball passes it to Marcy. Marcy over to John. John looks for the shot and doesn't like what he sees and passes it over to Farley. Farley will dribble into a group of defenders again, crowded by three Pierce defenders and picks up the foul including Paul Loranger, who is at six foot 10. He just kind of drove into him, but he picked up the foul. That's good. Make sure that uh, he gets fouled in there if you're going to do that. First shot's up and good for Marced Farley. Second free throw rolls in and out, so lead stays at 65 to 49 for Pierce Raiders. Jacobs with the basketball now, guarded by Malone, passes it over to the to the corner. Three point shot's no good, air ball, and then Farley comes up with the rebound, dribbles through the lane, kicks it out to Condell. Condell puts up a shot just inside the three point line, and it's no good. And out of bounds, possession will go to Pierce. 13 for Pierce will be checking into the game. Mark Royster out of Miami, Florida. So a long way to travel. Yeah, 5'9 guard, long ways from home, playing some basketball for the Pierce College Raiders. Matthews with the basketball guarded by Malone, passes it to Bays. Bays has trouble handling it and saves the possession of the basketball though and kicks it out to his teammate Matthews who gives it to Jacobs. Jacobs looks like he might have dribbled it off the ref's foot and no call on the play, but play on and Pierce will wind up missing the layup. Rebound goes to Centralia. Good job by John Dementz pulling down the board there and then looking for Marcy on the break. Shots up by Malone, the three-point shot from the right-hand corner is no good. They get their own rebound, and then they turn it over again as Pierce comes up with the steal. It's going to be a foul, foul on Malone, it looks like. 
That's going to be his third. Got a 16-point ball game with 11 minutes and 33 seconds left to go. And Coach Moyer wants a timeout. He's going to call a full timeout here. Yeah, it seems like uh, Pierce a little bit sloppy lately with that ball. Uh, gives a would give Centre a chance to really make a good run here, but they they're missing their shots. Yeah, at, at this point in the ball game, Centralia just needs to really focus on getting stops and then coming down at the other end and taking it either one point at a time or one one basket at a time, I should say. Mm -hmm. That's the way they should. Yeah, still plenty of time left it. in the game. That you know they don't really have to rush. They, they need to be careful with their so shot selection though. So they, and they've gotten some turnovers off of Pierce. They just have to. Um, Make sure that they score on those turnovers. So, but Farley, really the workhorse for uh, Centralia College tonight. Yeah, and Pierce is, Pierce is picking up on it, but just having a hard time slowing him down right now. So maybe just if you're Centralia, give him a little breather and then ride him out through the rest of this game here, and hopefully he could pull it through for you. And with the, the defenders coming in and collapsing on him, then maybe he'll be looking to kick it out to some open shooters which this is the kind of moment where not having Zach Karras kind of hurts you because if you can remember last year, he was big time on the, all the three-pointers. Yeah, well, you, I think Scott has hit two three-pointers, so I'd get it out to him or Dumitz because those two can hit the three. Yeah. That'll open it up a little bit better for him if he can do that. Matthews brings up the ball for his team. And passes it over to number 13, Royster. Good ball movement by Pierce as it winds up in Jacob's hand. Over in the corner, Jacob's back to Matthews. And Marshy tightly guarding Jacobs now. Shots, or passes out to Royster at the top of the key. Shots up and no good. Bounces out of bounds. Possession will go to the Trailblazers. 11 minutes and seven seconds left to go. Score 65 to 49. Pierce Raiders with the lead over Centralia College. Condell Scott passes it over to John DeMitz. John DeMitz passes it back. They're just basically working on a good ball movement until they can get off a smart shot. And John's in the corner. His shot runs up no good. Good touch, but it just rolls out. And number two, Matthews flies through the lane, splits the defenders, and lays it up along the right side of the hoop over I believe it was John DeMets down there trying to protect the basket. Just yeah, nice athletic move by by Matthew. Malone with the height advantage didn't still not often to shoot that ball. And Marcy with the basketball now dribbles along the right side baseline, passes it, and winds up open shot for DeMets, rolls in and out. Two shots there for John that looked good but don't didn't fall. And now out of bounds in the there's going to be a conference here by the two refs. It's a little bit of confusion. And it's going to stick with the Pierce Raiders. Argument from one of the players from Matthews and his coach there. Matthews definitely one of the leaders on the, for, these, for the Pierce Raiders. Dominant board there by the big man, Loringer. Mm -hmm. Fights for it. And Doesn't have to do much work. Over and back called now as uh, Loringer <laughs> throws it a little bit over his teammate's head. And the refs weren't really sure about that one, but the coach was for, yeah. for Centrea. Coach Moore jumping up, letting him know that it wasn't over and back. Malone with the basketball now, passes it to Condell at the top of the key. Condell over to John in the left corner, drawing hop steps and travels. So another turnover there by the Centralia Trailblazers. Under 10 minutes left in the game, 67-49, and Centralia can't afford to not come down court and score. Yeah, no. Watch up. Watch up. Pierce with the basketball now. And they inbound, or try to feed it onto the inside and bounces off of Looked like the Pierce player's hand, but they're gonna think that off Farley's foot. I think is what happened. Better look at it down there underneath the hoop, and they're gonna possession's gonna stay with Pierce. Shots up by Bays and no good. 
Loringer saves the possession for his team as he tips it to Matthews. Matthews finds himself in trouble and throws it away. Malone with the steal is told to attack by his coach and he puts up the shot that's no good. And Loringer with the basketball, with the rebound, and outlets it to his, his point guard, Jacobs. Jacobs will set up the offense. Three-point shots up by Matthews. Looked good, but hit the front of the rim and bounced off. No good. Jacobs now with the ball at the top of the key. Puts up a shot through the, floating through the lane, and they're going to call a foul, I believe, on the floor. Quit blocking. The foul's going to go on the floor. Now Ray's going to, Ray Brooks is going to come in the game here for Colin Malone. Raymond Brooks, another player out of California. We have three players out of California. So now Pierce with the basketball setting up the offense. Number one, Jacobs at the top of the key being guarded by Brooks. And good ball movement by Pierce as they swing it around for the open three pointer in the corner, which is no good from Bays. Brooks comes up with the rebound, but did not realize that he had somebody right behind him to come up and steal the ball, but he steals it right back, playing in the passing lanes. Good job by Brooks to not give up on the play there. Condell Scott now with the ball for Centralia. Passes it to Marcy. Marcy dribbles it over to Ray. Ray's not looking to score here, but Pass it over to Condell in the corner. He's definitely looking to shoot it. He puts it up and in for three. Condell is good for another three-pointer. The third that we've seen from him for this ball game. I believe it's three for three. Got yeah, it. I, I think you're right. more. He might have missed one, but uh, he needs to do more of that. Mm -hmm. So scores now 67-52 with eight minutes left to go here in the ball game. 15-point ball game. Definitely not out of reach for Centralia. They just need to take it one bucket at a time and figure it out here. To get the stops. And so defense, defensive intensity picked up a little bit here by the Trailblazers, and they get the stop. Farley with the rebound, just going coast to coast. Looks at uh, Scondale Scott for the layup. He puts it up, and it's no good, but Centralia saves the possession of the basketball. Farley really in there working hard during this ball game. Puts up a shot right now, and up and in from the shot from the about three, three feet inside the three-point line there, but hits it. So scores now 67-54 with a little over seven minutes left to go in the ball game. Nice run here by the Trailblazers. Yeah, and every time they come down the, the court, they just can't afford not to, to score at this point because you're getting to close to that five-minute mark there. And uh, Pierce, I know they came down the last time. They kind of sat on the ball, kind of passed it around quite a bit. They want to run time off that clock before they take a shot. But uh, Centralia, you know, it's not panic mode yet, but you just, you just really can't miss a close in shot. But I would, uh, I don't think it's essentially take any of those threes right yet, but if you're gonna be inside, you, you have to make those or at least get fouled. But watch those turnovers. So on the court for Centralia is Condell Scott, Scott, Ray Brooks, Marcy Rogers, and then Marced Farley, John Dumetz. Brooks is on ball defender here and guarding Jacobs, the point guard for Pierce. Jacobs passes it over to Bays. Bays kicks, swings it one more time to his corner and then cuts. On the cut, they feed Bays and he puts up a shot. It's no good, gets it on board, falls back and puts it up and in on the fadeaway there. So with under seven minutes to go, Bays puts his team up 69 to 54. Centralia now with the basketball, working on the ball movement, 20 seconds left on the shot clock here. And Marcy, a little bit, little bit of trouble underneath his own hoop, gets, dribbles his way out of it, passes it to Condell. Condell back to Marcy and back and forth to each other ends up in Marcy's hands as he drives right through the lane and then passes out to John Dumitz for the three point shot on the right wing and it's up and in. So now 12 point ball game here as it's 69-57. Pierce with the lead. Yeah, good ball movement by Centra in that last one. 
Bays is going to be called with the push off as he had to clear room to get off that pass. Too much pressure there by the defenders. There's Marcy and Ray were both in the area, but I believe it was uh, Marcy who was matched up on Bays and causing all the trouble there. Now, Ray's going to be running the offense here as he passes it over to Marcy. Marcy Rogers kicks it back to Ray. Ray gives it to Condell Scott. Condell Scott finds Marcy wide open on the cut, and it's up and in from the left block. Ten-point ball game here. So it's just all they need to do is get a stop, and then they could be looking to cut it down to single digits for the first time in a long time. And so Centralia definitely stepping it up here in this later part of the ball game. Jacobs drives hard to the hoop, to the hoop, trying to make something happen for his team, and he draws the foul. I don't know if that's against Dumitz or not. Yeah, let's see who they make. Oh, yep, John Dumitz is who they're going to call it on. Fourth foul. So I can hear Coach Klobdahl yelling, taking the charts instead of trying to block that. Yeah. So it's still a 10 point lead. Jacobs missed his first free throw. 535 left in the game. New so, Orleans wins. So that's Seahawks. I believe next so. Saturday. I believe so. So we just got a final on that score. New Orleans wins 26-24. The, the NFL action going on tonight. And now back to this ball game here. Condell Scott puts up a three-point shot, and it's no good as it's just short. Hits the front of the rim, and Pierce comes up with the rebound. And now inside the Loringer, and he put. That's the Dumitz fifth team. foul on Dumitz. Yeah. John's out of the game with five minutes left, five minutes and six seconds left to go after it's been a great run by Centralia. And now maybe the person who's been anchoring the run here, John Dumitz, is going to sit out for the rest of the ball game. And Broussard will come in. Patrick Broussard takes his place, and he should step down there and try and do one of the rebounding spots, but apparently he's not going to. So Pierce holding back on the run from Centralia. They've done that pretty well all night. Marcid Flarley comes up with the rebound. Five minutes left to go. Pierce with the lead, 72-59. And Condell Scott with the ball at the top of the key. Passes it to Ray Brooks. Back to Condell. And then over to Marcy. Swings it to Ray. Back over to uh, Marcid Farley in the right corner. And he hits the three. So it's back to a 10-point ball game. It's with four minutes and 40 seconds left to go here in the second half. Probably gonna be leaning on Farley quite a lot. Pierce works on the ball movement. Number five puts up a shot and it's no good. Farley comes and drives through the lane, no good. Good rebound though by Brooks. He looks for the shot and it pump fakes, doesn't take it, passes it to Farley. He puts up a shot, air ball, and quickly on the other end is uh, Number five for Pierce, Chris Parker. Chris Parker having a breakout standout game here. And puts his team up by 12 points. It's a score 74-62. Condell's left wide open. Everybody on the bench telling him to shoot, but he's Should elects have taken not to. Yeah. And, and then Ray over there in the corner gets fouled, and so that stops the clock here for a moment. As Centralia will take it out underneath. Foul's going to be on number four of uh, Pierce. It's going to be Barsh, his third foul. 12 point game. Condell with the ball up top over to Marcy. Mar Marcy Farley in the corner, which is no good. Marcy Patrick gets the ball and puts up a shot, gets blocked. Marcy comes up with a put up a shot, gets blocked, but draws a foul. So, and stops the clock and. Uh, Marcy Rogers is going to be at the free throw line. Who was that chance. foul? Do you know? Number four. So what did he do? I wasn't sure. I, it seemed like he got the ball, but. That's what I look like. It's all right. As long as somebody is at the line there. <laughs> yeah. Or. Farley playing a lot of minutes for some trade tonight, being the workhorse, but putting in a lot of minutes. Yeah, definitely. Huffing and puffing over here, but it's going to have to be adrenaline that's going to kick in here. 
And you can see that last three-point shot was a little short, I think, on him. So he might be tying out a little bit. But, you know, it's the time you got to suck it up. Marcy hits both of his free throws, bringing it to a 10-point game. Scores 74-64 with three minutes and 30 seconds left to go in the ball game. Pierce with possession of the basketball, 19 seconds left on the shot clock. Trying to run some time down here. And just passing it back and forth. Matthews kicks it over to, to number five, Parker. Parker throws it away. Marcy winds up, oh, got away with the travel. He looked like he didn't know what to, he was doing with the basketball there as he was picking up his dribble. And at the other end, of course, it winds up with a layup for Pierce. Since has had their opportunities, you know, just kind of not capitalized on them. Yeah. Ray Brooks over to Marcy. Marcy not looking to shoot the outside shot either. And Brooks with the ball at the top of the key over to Condell Scott. Condell Scott gives it to Farley. Farley drives to the lane and he's, they're going to be called for the foul, but looked like he was straight up on that one too. Number 35. No argument by Loringer though, so he must believe that he got him there. Yeah. So Farley at the line shooting two free throws as their as their team's down by 12. 76-64. First free throws up and in by Farley. They keep whittling it down to 10 points, but they just can't seem to break that barrier. Yeah. Two minutes and 47 seconds left to go. Coach Moore is going to have a little conference here with his guard play. And second shot's no good by Farley, so it's a, an 11 point lead here by Pierce. And Coach is asking him to extend it, so extend the game, so it sounds like maybe they're going to be looking to foul here soon and play the foul game as they're down by 11 with two minutes and 30 seconds left to go. Pierce works their offense into number three, David Bays. He's in the short corner on the left side and puts it up and in for two points. So Pierce now with a 13-point lead, two minutes and 15 seconds left to go in the game. A good step-through move as uh, Ray Brooks Uses a little Euro step and yeah. gets through, lays it up on, on the left side. I'm not sure why he hasn't been doing that more in, in the game. Nice athletic move by him, though. Definitely he needs to be looking to score more. There's a couple players on here that seem, on the Centralia College roster, that seem a little bit timid to, on the offensive end. And now Pierce sets up the offense. Gary Jacobs with the ball, passes it to Matthews. Ten seconds left on the shot clock, and number five, uh, Could have Chris put Smith, the cap in the game there. Yeah, Chris Parker puts up a shot up and in. Three pointers good, so the score is now 81 47. And one minute and 30 seconds left to go here. You're gonna, Pierce will be looking to run clock, and everybody's, you're seeing it from the sideline. They're all calling it run the clock. Yeah, Broussard on a put back missed that easy layup there, so I think that, that three point shot by Pierce pretty much put the seal on that game. No look pass by Matthews to Jacobs. Jacobs finishes with the easy two points. All he had to do is turn and lay it up. The score is now 83-47. Brooks tries striving hard and creating something, but nothing goes for him. And now on the fast break is Pierce, and the shot rolls in and out. you got to like really the... Uh the ability for Centre to bring it back down, you know, just can't, haven't been able to finish some of those shots they really needed. Yeah, definitely showing some fight. And Marcy drives along the left side of the hoop and draws the foul. So there's 43 seconds left to go. Mar Marcy Rogers out of California will go to the line to shoot two free throws. First shot's no good by Rogers. Now number four, uh, Barsh will check in for the big man, Paul Loringer. Loringer's likely done for the evening as there's only 43 seconds left to go. Barsh gets in there and gets a rebound. Tell him to wind the clock down now. See the coaches from Pierce telling him is run the clock down. 30 seconds left to go here in the ball game as Pierce has a basketball and they put up a shot. It's no good and now this is going to be it for the basketball game. They're going to dribble it out with 17 seconds left to go here. Not likely to see a shot. I was actually surprised at seeing one before. 
And Patrick goes for the steal, and they're going to call a foul. On Broussard there. Yeah. Looks like he had a clear path to the ball, though, didn't it? Yeah. I don't know. At this point, it's kind of about sportsmanship. and. Yeah. And, it, you know, with 18 seconds left, he took that three-point shot. That's really yeah. not what you if, want to be doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the coach is talking to the player right now about that. Mm-hmm. And that, the ref talking yeah. to him, too, about it. First free throw is up and good. So now... Pierce with the lead, 84, 67, 10 seconds left to go. This game's all but over. And Condell's probably going to put up a last shot here for the Trailblazers. And it's no good. It ends up short, and then they keep playing through. It's rare, rare sight in a basketball game with a lead like this is both teams to. Because that could be potentially dangerous out there making plays like that. It could be, yeah, you don't want to get hurt with no. a couple seconds left when you're losing and you know the game's over pretty much. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I guess you want to show that you're playing 100% for the rest of the game. I'd be out there protecting myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's just get ready for the next game. So, Centrea showing a lot of fight in this game, uh, able to whittle that 20 some point lead down, but just not able to get over 10 to 10 points. So 1.8 seconds left. I don't know if he made it or not. The guy was right uh, he didn't make that one, yeah. And he made that one too. Right. So game should be over here. And there it goes. So final score, 69-85. Right. So it was a really good game. Centrea early on was able to Kind of hang in there with uh, Pierce, but Pierce pulled away and didn't wait through the first half. And then uh, starting the second half, so Dre was able to kind of work its way back, get it down to about 10. I think, you know, at the 10-minute mark, they were down by about 10. And it was just getting over that 10-point that hump there. They just couldn't get it. So they had opportunities, though. You know, they had a couple of times where they got the ball and could have whittled that down to about six points, but they... Uh, they just missed some shots there or turned the ball back over. Yeah, definitely. That's a positive way to end it. The, you know, you want to go down putting up a fight, and that's exactly what they did. And, and it just Yeah, I think Pierce would be one of the uh, teams that's favored to, to win the league this year, and uh, they've shown why they're such a good team. Very athletic team, good ball movement. Um, they, got, they got some tall people for the rebounds. They got good athletic ball control people, good three-point shooters. Yeah, so Centralia was also missing two of their main players, Calvin yep. Edwards and Zach Karras. So yeah, the other thing was uh, Dumitz was in a lot of foul trouble. He mm -hmm. missed a lot of the first half. Um, so you know, who knows? In the when they meet up again in the next game that Centralia plays, Grace Harper, that should be a, a good game. So we'll just wait around for some statistics here, so if we'll get those, and if not, we'll see you next Wednesday. But um, so yeah, Centralia, Owen.